in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Let each day be your masterpiece. Unknown. Anuradha Mohit The Special Repertoire Na- National Human Rights Commission, India, since March 2002, is Anuradha Mohit, a visually impaired 42-year-old lady. When promising young Anuradha lost her vision at the age of 10 years, it was an unpleasant shock which left her father totally shattered and her mother in charge of making sure that she continued to excel in all activities like before. A versatile lady herself with a God-fearing positive attitude, Anuradha's mother gave up her own interests and dedicated herself to reconstructing her daughter's interrupted life and so anuradha completed her education with distinction from an integrated system always remaining on the periphery of the world of the blind while her inability to see did present obstacles in the course of her educational career anuradha bravely weathered the storms she passed through and completed her masters in music from the punjab She then did her MPhil with specialization in research methodologies in fine arts also from Punjab and to crown her academic career with glory she did her masters level credits combining special education and administration from Vanderbilt University in USA Her experience in America holds bitter sweet memories for Anuradha for that was when she was married to the most wonderful soft caring man whom she subsequently lost he went with her and made that short part of her life magical in every way the american experience also instilled great confidence in anuradha and exposed her to the methods used in the us to educate low vision students Anuradha visited schools and saw how the free availability of books in braille and computer literacy had helped in making the visually impaired students independent and productive. When Anuradha was widowed after 2 years she fell into a morass of depression. Getting used to this reality was much more difficult for her than facing the fact of her blindness. But time inevitably passed and Anuradha found herself lecturing at KMV College and later at APJ College of Fine Arts in Jalandhar. It was while she was still teaching at KMV Jalandhar that Anuradha wandered into a school for the blind to inquire if she could learn braille. She was most perturbed by the sad conditions in which the blind children were being taught. No reading material in Braille was available. The Vocational Training Institute too had a run-down inoperative library and that really disturbed Anuradha. She realized then how disparate her privileged circumstances had been and how her strong support systems had allowed her to tackle her own disability with comparative ease. Anuradha recognized now that success in life depends on opportunity and opportunity depends on background the freedom support and encouragement that she had so far been considering her right had been a privilege a gift this realization coincided with her introduction to mr kapoor who was then the president of nab delhi Together they decided to institutionalize the experiences Anuradha had grown up with so that they could close the disparity of opportunity and education between the privileged and the less privileged. Anuradha joined NAB Delhi in 1987 as development officer rising steadily to take charge as executive director of NAB Delhi branch in 1990. 
Firm in her conviction that every child can excel, Anuradha targeted the parents of the disabled children. An attempt was made to educate the parents so that each child could have an equal base coming from a similar ideological source. In 1999, with her entry into the government as Deputy Chief Commissioner for Persons with Disabilities, Anuradha's area of concern enlarged itself to encompass all disabilities, not just the cause of the visually challenged. Anuradha's present job as Special Repertoire entails assisting the Commission in investigation and inquiry into specific complaints, visits to jails, juvenile homes, beggar and preventive homes, aftercare homes, Nari Niketans and so on. Liaison with NGOs and other human rights institutions specifically identified by the Commission and attending to matters remitting to the National Human Rights Commission by the Supreme Court, supervising research training and writing assignments also come under the purview of her department. Anuradha's significant contributions include the promotion and implementation of mainstream education programs for disabled children and the prevention of disability in general and blindness in particular through outreach programs. Anuradha has been instrumental in initiating research on gender issues within the disability movement in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan and India. She has helped to politically empower the disabled through representation in major government bodies and NGOs. Anuradha edits magazines, reports for e-magazines, has written a manual on service laws, rules and regulations in the context of disabilities. She was also the principal investigator on the status of blind women in India, Nepal and Sri Lanka in 1999-2000. Currently, Anuradha is consultant to UNESCO on information and communication technology and disabilities and has prepared a working paper for the World Summit on Information Society in Geneva in December 2003. She is also on the working group drafting the Convention for the UN General Assembly on Rights of People with Disabilities as the sole representative of NGOs and human rights institutions in Asia-Pacific region. Quite accustomed to receiving prizes and being constantly awarded for her merits, Anuradha was pleased when she was awarded the Neelam Kanga Prize in 1991. She was happy to be recognized by NAB India, though her vision about the potential and possibilities for the blind is quite different. Thus, has Anuradha Mohit let each day of her life become her masterpiece. With many miles to go yet and multitudinous tasks to complete, she chooses to commit her energy to fighting for equality and to empower people with disabilities to accept unconditionally full responsibilities for themselves and their actions. Although life is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcoming of it. Helen Keller Dipti Bhatia Shy, quiet, fair and small built, Dipti always wanted to be a teacher. Today she is not only that but is a coordinator in the inclusion department of Vidya Sagar Special School in Chennai. Born blind, Dipti spent her early years with her maternal grandparents in Kerala. In those wonderful carefree days, she learnt to love life and because of her grandparents' supportive attitude towards her disability, Dipti felt competent in every way. She completed her SSC from a school for visually impaired children in Chennai. When she sought admission for her plus two in an integrated school, Dipti felt for the first time that she was different from the rest. The school authorities were reluctant to admit her, stating that the students may respond adversely to her. 
After a tussle, Dipti was admitted, and though the children accepted her happily, she felt a distinct discomfort on the part of the teachers. Dipti plunged into student life despite the discrimination she faced. She took part in debates, essay competitions, and other extracurricular activities all through her college life. She passed her BA, MA, and MPhil exams with a plum. She was denied a psychology major because the college felt that the practicals would be difficult for her. Whilst college was mostly a happy experience, Dipti was made to realize repeatedly that life is not the same for the differently abled. She faced the same realization when she went looking for a job. The job market was bad for me, she admits. How will you teach when you can't see? They asked me, even after I had successfully navigated at the Seat Car Rally for the Blind in Chennai. So, to plug the time until she found a job that she wanted, Dipti joined Vidya Sagar School for Special Children as a volunteer. And I loved it from the very first day, she says with a smile. The work was so challenging, much more than it would have been in a regular school. The children in this school are handicapped and have motor difficulties, so integrating them into regular schools is more of a challenge. Dipti coordinates with 40 different schools and persuades them to take in these children so that they can grow in a normal environment and maintain a regular school routine. Her own struggle during her growing years gives Dipti the ammunition and impetus she requires to propose the inclusion of her students. The founder chairperson of the Vidya Sagar School, Ms. Poonam Natrajan, is one of the most special people in Dipti's life. She believes in bringing out the potential in people, Dipti says. Her trust empowers us. We work with her, not for her. The greatest struggle in Dipti's valorous life has been to come out of herself and interact with people. Shy as she is, it is with help and understanding from Miss Natrajan that even her own parents have come to understand Dipti better. I preferred to remain quiet and stay by myself, she remembers. It was my school friend Shaila who brought me out of the house and made me realize that people are nice. But I owe my happiest years of childhood entirely to my grandmother who made my life magical. Dipti's interest in ham radio developed because of one of her father's friends. They suggested that this would be a good way for her to interact with people from all over the world and get over her shyness. Having been used to answering the telephone for her father and brothers who were motorsports people, Dipti found this easy to do. Along with ham radio, she also enjoys doing macrame. She makes bags out of jute and wire and enjoys knitting too. Dipti is very happy with her life. Life is there, you live it, she says philosophically. When she received the distinguished Neelam Kanga Prize in 1994 for her pioneering commitment in mainstreaming disabled children, Dipti had only been working for two years. She felt very honoured and determined to work harder because she felt that the prize had put a responsibility on her shoulders. Subsequently, she received the Vocational Service Award from the local Rotary Club also. Dipti has attended many seminars and conferences on mainstreaming disabled children and integrating them. She has presented papers on the subject too. She made a conscious choice about a profession which is her passion. She proved to her family and relatives that she could get a job where her interest lay because she knew all along that she wanted to work in the field of multiple disabilities. In the many years that Dipti has worked with intensity and fervor, she has brought light and joy into the life of many special children. Children to whom going to school and experiencing normal school child experiences would otherwise have remained a mystery. Music washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. Red Orbach Anjali Nigvekar 
gifted with a golden voice for singing anjali lives by baba amte's blessings your darkness is luminous for anjali was born blind but the power of her music has delighted innumerable souls and lighted up many a forlorn heart anjali was deeply interested in music ever since she was young This interest was further fired by Shri Gokuldas Joshi who taught music in her school. Anjali stood 6th in Nagpur University from where she graduated with music, philosophy and English literature as her subjects. She was the only blind student in the college and received full support from her friends and teachers. For her MA she took only vocal music and then went on further to do her PhD in music. Anjali had to study extensively for her PhD which she completed in 6 years with financial aid of $200 per year from the World Blind Union for which NAB India recommended her. She then got herself a job as an honorary lecturer in music at the Shivaji University at Kolhapur where she has been working for the last 12 years. Alongside Anjali started Dayanand Sangeet Vidyalay where the students are prepared for different exams of Gandharva Mahavidyalay. I always wanted to be different and do something unusual with my life she smiles I wanted to do something better higher and she did she culminated her studies and the skills she had acquired by becoming a teacher and imparting her passion in small parts to all her students Anjali is a recognized artist on All India Radio and is frequently invited by various social and religious organizations to perform music concerts. She has participated in fundraising musical programs organized by local institutions working for the disabled and trained music students to be successful on stage and become teachers of music like herself. I want to teach the history of Indian music as a science and an art. I wish to personally guide and create a love for Indian music amongst our children and the youth. I also want to participate in cultural programs in India and abroad to celebrate the aesthetics of Indian music, she says. The Neelam Kanga Prize for her commitment and achievement in the field of music in the year 1995 was the first of Anjali's awards. About receiving it she says it was a very very joyous moment which encouraged me to march towards my ultimate motto learn for a bright future. Anjali feels that the prize made her more respected in her college and in the community. She later received the Sangeet Ratna Award of Honor. A patron and member of the Executive Council of NAB Kolhapur, Anjali attends various seminars and conferences organized by musical groups. The most influential and special people in her life are her parents and family who encouraged and supported her in her unusual endeavor even though sometimes it was difficult. Though Anjali feels competent and comfortable with her life and work, she does suffer moments of self-consciousness when she is faced with new people who are sighted. Then I feel inadequate sometimes, she admits, but I am learning to overcome this too. Anjali was never interested in getting married. It is better to be single and one's own master, she says firmly. Anjali who values being a good human being foremost in her life wants to get a full time job she hopes that one day she will be able to teach music on a voluntary basis to visually disabled and economically handicapped women so that they can use it as a livelihood and teach to earn so the committed nightingale sings on bringing awareness understanding and melody through her golden voice When love and skill work together expect a masterpiece John Ruskin Mukta Dagli Mukta Dagli lives in a small town of Gujarat 
She is the Joint Secretary of the Louis Braille Memorial Trust, a trustee of the VK Shah Andhyan Suhai Trust. The Navketan Andhjan Mandal Bachao and the Nav Navsarjan Andhjan Mandal. She is a committee member of the Women's Association for the Blind and of the Lioness Club of Surendranagar. She has been honoured by several local institutions and has received a cash prize for her achievements and contributions in the field of social work. All this between the years 1995 and 2001. Mukta was also awarded the Neelam Kanga Prize in 1995 for her outstanding work with blind women. It made me very happy that my hard work had been recognized, she says, and it invigorated me to do more. Ever since Mukta can remember, she has been inclined towards Samaj Seva. Having lost total vision at the age of seven years because of meningitis, Mukta grew up realizing how marginalized the visually impaired can be, particularly the women. This knowledge created an anger within her and also the determination to do something worthy to empower blind women who thus far had no future worth looking forward to. After completing her BA, Mukta went on to do her teacher's training course in preparation for starting her own organization for the uplift of blind girls. In 1995, she formed the Sri Pragna Chakshu Mahila Seva Kunj, an organization which focused on enabling blind women to be independent, strong and capable of leading their own lives. In this endeavor, she was supported by her husband who is also visually impaired and a committed social worker. We decided not to have children of our own because every child we help is ours. We have consciously decided to dedicate our lives to helping those who need our strength to overcome their hurdles, Mukta says. Sri Pragna Chakshu Mahila Seva Kunj houses up to 80 girls at a time. They are educated in home science and computers according to their interest and aptitude. There is a hair and skin care beauty course too, but that is very strenuous. The girls who opt for this course are made to practice hair cutting on paper, then on wire and finally on hair. By the time they are fully trained, the blind, blind girls are threading eyebrows and are adept at every skill as much as a sighted person. Mukta arranges the marriages of the girls under her care and provides a support system for them even after they have gone to live with their husbands. The girls are always secure in the knowledge that they are loved and will be cared for in case of need, like in the time of pregnancy and childbirth or if they have marital problems. Mukta also runs a community-based rehabilitation project where vocational training is imparted to the blind in rural areas. This enables them to become mobile, confident and gain earning power. They are helped to set up cottage industries in their areas. Mukta raises money for her projects through donations. She receives grants from the Social Defence Department of the Government and has also received generous support from the Secondary Board of Gujarat Government and the Central Government Grant for Integration. She travels extensively to raise funds and always feels great when supported by the institutions she approaches. The government has recently sanctioned one acre of land where Mukta plans to build a school with a hostel and a restaurant. In future, Mukta plans to build a home for the aged blind, a physiotherapy centre, a workshop and a residential colony for self-employed blind. She would like to start a music college for the blind and a home science diploma course. She feels the urgent need for a braille library and a talking book library along with the studio. And if all this is not enough to dream about, Mukta also wishes one day to have a cricket team of blind girls. Truly an em emancipated woman, I do all this for selfish reasons, she says. It makes me happy.
In bringing her joy to full circle, Mukta has followed her heart with all her might and has truly made a significant difference to so many precious lives, helping many a hesitant flower to bloom. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Helen Keller Sudha Patel In Khera district of Gujarat, in Petlad Tul Taluka, there is a little village called Changa. In 1995, Changa catapulted itself to fame by electing Sudha Patel, a visually impaired lady, as the village Sarpanch. Sudha toppled seven other aspirants in her wake and Changa transformed from a little known village into a newsworthy spot. A self-professed Gandhian, Sudha won the election through door-to-door -door campaigning without spending any money, without using muscle power or making false promises. This should prove as an encouraging sign for all disheartened good citizens. I wish to re-establish the Gandhian values in the election of the parliament as well, because the time is now or never says the dynamic Sudha, who revolutionized the system in five years of her leadership. Born blind due to glaucoma, Sudha was always go a good and hard-working student, keen on social work. Being an all-rounder, she was a mellifluous singer, interested in dramatics, poetry recitals and athletics. She won several prizes during her student years. In 1994, on World Handicap Day, Sudha organized a rally where 450 blind and disabled persons participated at Anand to create awareness about the plight, the rights and expectations of differently abled people. The rally, which was well attended, was sponsored by Lakheba Bhagini Samaj Anand. In 1994 and 1995, Sudha organized two large gatherings where about 30 disabled people were able to choose spouses for themselves. She also organized a tricycle race with the help of LBP Trust Anand in which 25 disabled persons took part. When Sudha was appointed the Sarpanch of Changa, she had to appear on television, hold radio interviews and talk to the press. All this she did with much grace and dignity, despite her disability. As Sarpanch, Sudha transformed the face of her little village. In this era of violence and dishonesty, she infused in her little hamlet the guiding principles of non-violence and tolerance taught by the Mahatma. Along with her daily duties, Sudha organized blood donation camps, free health care camps and yagnas where everyone was allowed to participate irrespective of caste or creed. She shared her ideology with other village sarpanch, hoping to encourage them to absorb the Gandhian spirit and ideals. To celebrate Gandhiji's 126th birth anniversary, Sudha organized the free distribution of gram, peas and soya bean oil to 119 needy families on behalf of the Purvai Rashtra Shakti Abhyan. She obtained a resolution from the outgoing panchayat for 10 acres of land with the intention of building a school for the blind, a workshop for the disabled and a home for the aged. The BPA Ahmedabad Trust entrusted Sudha with the task of organizing eye camps in certain talukas of Gujarat and for cataract operations to be done at Ravi Shankar Maharaj Eye Hospital in Chikodra. The first eye camp ever was organized in 1995 in her own village and was most successful. With help from the Purvai Rashtra Shakti Abhyan and Yoga Charya Shri Dushant Bhai Modi, Advisor Gujarat State Yoga and Nature Cure Board, Sudha organized acupressure and yoga camps all over Gujarat. 
She also persuaded Anand Hospital, run by Ramakrishna Seva Mandal, to start a mobile hospital service to help the needy. In her attempt to re-establish value-based education, Sudha joined hands with Purvai English Institute to visit schools and colleges to awaken patriotic zeal amongst the students and a feeling of responsibility towards the society they live in. Sudha received the Neelam Kanga Prize in 1996 for being the first blind lady sarpanch of a village and for her notable contribution to society. All this Sudha achieved in the short span of her 30 years. Not content to rest on her laurels and full of new ideas, Sudha is a project coordinator of an integrated education project which is involved with a community-based rehabilitation program supported by the Jalaram Jan Seva Trust at Dharmaj. A leader of strong values with many more active, active years to go, Sudha will leave behind her in, an indelible stamp, a legacy of service and justice in the community and a gift of compassion and deep understanding in the world of rehabilitation. Like dreams, small creeks grow into mighty rivers, unknown. Madhu Singhal Madhu Singhal the honorary managing trustee of Mitra Jyoti a charitable trust for the rehabilitation of persons with disabilities and an esteemed social worker in Bangalore today was born with a tumor in her eyes a tumor due to which she was born blind and was expected to die within the year Her distraught parents who belonged to an upper class business family traveled all over India and met with specialists but the verdict on their little baby remained the same When a year came and went and Madhu showed no signs of ill health developing physically just as normally as she should have her mother started to hope She also noticed that despite all diagnosis to the contrary Madhu seemed to be able to see her and so Madhu grew with a little extra caution on the part of her ever vigilant mother and some special con- considerations from her siblings who nonetheless re- resented her participation in games which slowed them down At age 3 with her very limited vision Madhu was so keen to study that she sat in with her older siblings while they worked and so she learned the alphabet and all the numbers well before her time she also went to nursery with her sister and brother and observed and participated When she was 5 a specialist in Chennai disagreed with the theory of the eye tumor diagnosing Madhu's malaise to be a damaged optic nerve which though it had affected her vision was no threat to her life at all he encouraged her relieved parents to send the bright little Madhu to school Not wanting to send their daughter to a school for the blind initially, her parents employed a blind teacher to teach her Braille privately. In a few weeks, Madhu had mastered Braille and began reading everything that was available faster than her father could provide new material which had to be brought all the way from Dehradun to Rohtak where they lived. Madhu showed the greatest aptitude for maths and was helped in her studies by her brother and sister who read to her willingly. Madhu committed everything to her memory which seemed to be elastic and never failing. When Madhu grew older her mother approached the principal of Vaish school at Rohtak where her elder sister studied to grant her admission. Very grudgingly Madhu was allowed into the school and spent the first few months in misery due to the thoughtless curiosity of her classmates When she was finally accepted Madhu was treated with compassion and received all the help she required But insensitive society lived up to expectancy ever ready with a barb or an inquiry about why so much trouble was being taken over a blind girl with a limited future 
Madhu completed her matriculation with a first division and was admitted into the Vaish College at Rotak. Since she wanted to take music as one of her subjects and it was not taught in the college, the principal took special permission for her to appear for the music exam. Madhu learnt music at home from her old music teacher. She took active part in poetry recitations and music in college and was awarded the best all-round student trophy. She graduated in 1981, topping her college. Much to her mother's worry, Madhu insisted on joining the overcrowded government college for post-graduation in music, which she successfully completed in 1983, standing second in Rotak University. On the threshold now of a new life, Madhu suffered a severe setback when she suddenly lost her father and the family had to relocate to Kanpur. For the next four years, there was no one to steer Madhu's life or advise her. Mr. Goyal, her brother-in-law, made her enroll for, for the mobility course at NAB Bangalore, Karnataka chapter. Madhu also acquired a working knowledge of Kannada. Madhu visited Bangalore often after this first visit and made many friends. She completed the telephone operator's course from Davos College while she visited all the organizations working for the welfare of the blind in Bangalore. In 1990, Mr. Goel registered a charitable trust under the name of Mitra Jyoti with the object of rehabilitating the disabled. Encouraged by Ms. N.S. Hema, the dynamic founder member of the Association of People with Disability, on a wheelchair herself, Madhu conducted a survey in the slums to identify children who needed help. Thus started a career of philanthropy which grew by leaps and bounds and embraced everyone in its warm circle of caring. Funds were raised, awareness created and Mitra Jyoti was on its way. Her main objective being to work for the blind, Madhu started an audio cassette library with 50 of her own cassettes. Here again, her brother-in-law assisted by donating a tape recorder and a hundred blank cassettes. In 1991, Mr. Goel presented Madhu with a house of her own and the audio cassettes, now much more professionally recorded, are lent from her home. Since 1997, it has been funded by Christopher Blinden Mission. In 1995, Madhu was granted 11 lakhs of rupees from a German organization to start a center for training blind women to become completely independent. In 1996, Madhu was awarded the prestigious Neelam Kanga Prize for her good work in developing Mitra Jyoti for disabled girls. In 1997, the first batch of girls were chosen for independent living skills, a four-month course which teaches all there is to know about managing a home, yoga and basic techniques in self-defense. Lecturers are invited to talk on issues such as reproductive health, independent living, legal literacy, home remedies and the rights of women. In 1992, Madhu was invited to Malaysia for an exchange program relating to women and disability. In 1996, she went to Hong Kong to attend an information technology conference. In 1997, she went to the USA for a month to attend the Young Adult Leadership Exchange Program. During this program, various activities like river rafting, horse riding and bungee jumping were organized for the participants. Madhu participated in every activity with enthusiasm. She was selected for membership in the World Blind Union and went to Bangkok for the General Assembly of the Asian Blind Union. Having conquered her initial fear of travel, Madhu now journeys extensively and often. Madhu's next plan is to organize land for her projects which are currently housed in three rented homes. 
She wants to tap the private and corporate sectors to seek employment for the disabled and to organize seminars to sensitize prospective employers. Instead of placing people in typical stereotype jobs, she intends to identify the job requirements of the moment and arrange on-the-job training for the people registered with her employment cell. So, this is Madhu today, the girl to whom life dealt an unequal hand. Madhu fashioned her own destiny, donating herself to the cause of rehabilitating the disabled. She continues to endeavor most dedicatedly to level the playing field so that differently abled people will have an opportunity to live as full and productive a life as they choose. Hemant J. Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind, India